Hello everyone. For today, we'll be discussing logic in this Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest Enrichment class for grades 5 and 6. When it comes to solving logic problems, they're very helpful in developing our understanding of logic for solving math problems and real-world problems. In terms of math problems, it particularly helps us in determining how to approach a problem. The problems or questions we'll be looking at in this video will primarily consist of true-false logic through truth tables, comparison of values, and comparing multiple options slash cases with each other in order to find a singular value. Here is our first question. Three friends, Smith, Roberts, and Farrell, live on the same street. Their professions are a doctor, an engineer, and a musician. The doctor has neither a sister nor a brother, and he is the youngest amongst his friends. Farrell is older than the engineer and is married to Smith's sister. What are the names of the doctor, the engineer, and musician in this order? We have A, Smith, Roberts, and Farrell, B, Farrell, Smith, Roberts, C, Roberts, Smith, Farrell, D, Roberts, Farrell, Smith, and E, Smith, Farrell, Smith. When solving for logic problems, it helps to create a true or false table based on our given information, where O is denoted as true and X is denoted as false. In this case, the table will contain the names of each person and their profession. From the given information, Pharrell is older than the engineer. So Pharrell is not the engineer as they are two different people. Also, since the doctor is the youngest of all, and Pharrell is older than the engineer, Pharrell is not the youngest and hence not the doctor. So Pharrell must be the musician. And since he is the musician, Smith and Roberts are not musicians, so you can put X's on that column. Next, we know that Pharrell is married to Smith's sister. And since the doctor doesn't have any brothers or sisters, Smith cannot be the doctor. And since Smith is neither the doctor or the musician, Smith has to be the engineer. And if Smith is the engineer and Pharrell is the musician, then Roberts is the doctor. Therefore, the answer to this question is C. Here is our second question. Andrea, Branimir, Celestin, and Dava placed on the first four places in a fencing tournament. The sum of the place numbers of Andrea, Branimir, and Dava is 6. The sum of the place numbers of Branimir and Celestin is also 6. If it is known that Branimir placed better than Andrea, determine who came first in the tournament. We have A. Andrea B. Branimir C. Celestin D. Dava or E. where it is impossible to determine who came first. To make this question easier, we introduce the notations for A. Andrea's place B. for Branimir's place C for Celestin's place, and D for Dava's place. From our new notations, it is given that A plus B plus D equals 6, B plus C equals 6, and that B is less than A. Given all possible values of B from 1 to 4, you can find the respective possible values of C from the equation B plus C equals 6. The table on the right would show those possibilities. So, when b equals 1, then c would equal 5, which does not work as c must be less than 5. When b equals 2, then c equals 4, which does work for a plus b plus d equals 6. When b equals 3, then c would also equal 3, which does not work as b and c cannot be equal. And when b equals 4, then c would equal 2, which does not work, as b cannot be last, as a is after b. It then follows that b equals 2 and that c equals 4. Next, since b is less than a, it follows that a is equal to 3 and that d is equal to 1. Therefore, our answer to this question is d. Here is our third question. Eight cards, numbered 1 to 8, are put in the boxes a and b. 
so that the sum of the card numbers in each box are equal. If there are only three cards in box A, which of the following statements is certainly true? A. Three cards in box B are odd numbered. B. Four cards in box B are even numbered. C. Card number one is not in box B. D. Card number two is in box B. Or E. Card number five is in box B. To help find the solution to this question, we have to find the total sum of all card numbers, which, add and all up, gives us 36. Hence, the sum of the card numbers in each box is 36 divided by 2, or 18. Let us determine which three cards have a sum equal to 18. There are several possibilities, and we should make sure we find them all. If we assume the greatest number in the triple is 6, then the greatest possible sum is 6 plus 5 plus 4, which is equal to 15. But 15 is less than 18. Therefore, either 7 or 8, or both, must be included in the triples. Case 1. The greatest two numbers are 7 and 8. Then clearly the third number is 18 minus the sum of 8 and 7, which is 15. So 18 minus 15 is 3. Thus, the triple is 8, 7, 3. Case 2. The greatest number is 8. Then the sum of the other two numbers is 18 minus 8, which is equal to 10. We can only use the numbers from 1 to 8, and we are allowed to use each of them at most once. This leaves the possibilities that either a, 7 plus 3 is equal to 10, or b, 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. And the triple is 8, 7, 3, and 8, 6, 4 are our results. But 8, 7, 3 was already taken in case 1. Thus, our next triple is 8, 6, 4. Case 3. The greatest number is 7. Then the sum of the other two numbers is 18 minus 7, which equals 11. Given the restrictions, the only possibility that generates a new triple is 6 plus 5, which equals 11. Thus, our last triple is 7, 6, 5. To sum up, there are three groups of cards that can be in box A. 8, 7, 3, 8, 6, 4, and 7, 6, 5. Finding the corresponding card numbers in box B and summarizing them on the right side of this table gives us these values. 6, 5, 4, 2, 1, 7, 5, 3, 2, 1, and 8, 4, 3, 2, 1. When checking which statement is always true, we see that statement D is always true, as number 2 is always in box B. Therefore, our answer when comparing each statement is D. Here is our fourth question. We want to color the squares in the grid using four colors, A, B, C, and D, in such a way that adjacent squares are not in the same color. The squares that share a vertex or a side are considered adjacent. Some of the squares have been colored as shown. What color must a shaded square have? A, color A, B, color B, C, color C, D, color D, or E, where there are two different possibilities for colors. For this question, there are two different possibilities for the square in the middle of the first row to be colors A or D. Therefore, it is necessary to check both cases. In case one, the square in the middle of the first row is color A. Consequently, following the required rules, we obtain the following colors for the rest of the table. Hence, as we can see from the table here, the only possibility for the color of the shaded square, in this case, is A. Now we check for case 2, where the square in the middle of the first row is color D. Then, following the exact same rules, the colors in the rest of the square are as follows, where we also see that the color in the shaded square also happens to be A. Therefore, since the shaded square in both case 1 and case 2 is A, the answer to this question is A. Here is our fifth question. A star is composed of triangles. 
one of the numbers 1, 2, 3, or 4 is written in every triangle so that each group of four triangles arranged in a row contains every number exactly once. The small picture represents one such shape placed horizontally. However, all other directions are considered. The star picture already contains three of the numbers. What number should be written in the triangle marked by the little asterisk? A, only the number one. B, only the number two. C, only the number three. D, only the number four. Or E, any of numbers one, two, or three. For this solution, First note that the three triangles in the middle of the second row of triangles cannot contain one, since the triangle above them already contains one. On the other hand, every group of four triangles should have at least one. Therefore, the corner triangles on the second row both contain ones. Similarly, because the number two is in the sixth row, there must be twos in the corners of the fifth row. For similar reasons, the rightmost triangles of the third and fifth row contain threes, so there must be a three in the fourth row. Now, we can determine the number in the middle of the fourth row. It cannot be two or three, so it must be one or four. Now, let us try one, then the shaded number. Then the number in the place of the question mark must be four. Finally, it is clear that the number written in, in the triangle marked by the asterisk should be 2 in this case. Secondly, we try 4 in the shaded box. Then, the number 1 must be placed instead of the question mark. Again, the number written in the triangle marked by the asterisk should be 2. In both cases, where the shaded triangle is 1 or 4, the answer is 2. Therefore, the number written in the triangle marked by the asterisk should be 2, and our answer is B. Thank you very much for listening, and good luck to you for the weeks ahead and on the contest.